Solofero, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, uh, do you know whether all the seats have now been declared in this election? Oh, well, uh, last time when we spoke to Usupile uh, Maroba, who is uh, the spokesperson of uh, the IEC in Botswana, uh, they had, uh, most of the seats had been declared uh, with uh, the, UC, uh, U, the Umbrella for Democratic Change. Seats haven't grown from uh, the 14 that was indicated to about 18 seats. Uh, you know, so uh, the one, the only one region hadn't declared uh, by the time when we were speaking to him. Mm -hmm. So uh, the opposition, like it has been said, had a very good showing in these elections. And when we spoke to Mr. Uh, Maroba, he indicated that this is the, you know, the, the most number of seats that opposition parties have won in a very long time in okay. uh, this southern African country. So he's saying that it was true that this election was hotly contested looking at the number of seats. He says normally opposition parties would win your know, like seven seats and all of that, but now, okay. you know, they, they have a lot more seats than it has been mm -hmm. in a number of years ever since uh, this country uh, gained independence. Yes. But, Sulu fellow, we also understand that uh, there were no celebrations that took place in the streets of Gaborone. That's after the announcement of the results in the early hours of uh, Sunday morning. The question here then is, are uh, Botswana generally accepting the results of this election? Yes, they do accept the results of these elections. The problem is that, you know, uh, within your urban setting like your Haboroni, you know, there's a, a lot more voters that actually were supporting. Uh, even if, when you look at council seats that have been won, you can see that in Haboroni, in places like the urban centers like Haboroni, most people were supporting uh, the opposition parties. So probably, you know, they thought that this was time for change, like one of the, the, the uh, opposition party has been punting around saying, you know, the time is, for, for change has, has come. And unfortunately, you know, the change that they needed, which or what that they were looking at was possibly a change of regime. And that did not happen with the win of uh, uh, the Botswana Democratic Party. So, you know, most of uh, the, uh, the people in, in Haburoni are not mm -hmm. really, you know, happy with that state of affairs, but they have accepted. The ones that we've spoke to, they have said that they have accepted the fact that, you know, that these elections were free and fair, mm -hmm. and they have accepted the outcomes of the elections. But they say that they are happy with the number of uh, seats that, uh, uh, you know, your umbrella for democratic change has uh, gotten in these elections, saying that that shows that there will be a serious challenge to, uh, you know, the, the mm -hmm. ruling uh, Botswana Democratic Party. And, uh, and, uh, just, and talking of that newly formed, uh, the umbrella for democratic change, there was so much talk that uh, this new party may change the political landscape in Botswana. So just how are they explaining then their performance uh, uh, in this election? Well, um, we haven't spoken to them yet, but when we spoke to the leader, you know, of uh, the the umbrella for democratic change, he uh, in the, like uh, days ago, he indicated that they're looking to you know to work towards ensuring that you know Botswana uh, changes, and they're talking about issues around the economy of Botswana. They're talking about issues around uh, you know the young, young people, you know, creation of jobs for young people. Mm -hmm. And they are saying that really that is what they they came together to do, to fight for a better Botswana for everybody. That's why they decided that, you know, as uh, opposition parties, they needed to come together under this umbrella to fight for what they believe would, would be a, a better Botswana for all the citizens of uh, this country. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that uh, SADC has declared uh, the polls generally free and fair, but uh, do we know of any other issues that have been brought uh, uh, either by political parties or by the other missions that were observing this election? Yeah, uh, your SADC mission has as you indicated, declared uh, the elections free and fair, but they had some misgivings about some issues, issues around uh, the participation or the, the you know, the uh, participation, yes, of uh, female electorate saying that the numbers were not really satisfactory of, 
you know, women that are, that are participating uh, in these elections or that were standing as electorate in these elections. And uh, they were even talking about issues around uh, uh, the, uh, the usage of indelible ink. You, you, in these elections in Botswana, they didn't use like we, we are accustomed to in, in South Africa. They didn't use uh, indelible ink to, you know, uh, sort of... Uh, uh, ensure that people do not abuse the system. They say that it is open to abuse if people are not uh, put with uh, or painted with indelible ink because they can then come back and then vote again. Yes. Those are uh, the, some of the issues that they raise as concerns. Yes. That, and, very, uh, and very quickly, uh, just before we let you go, when will the president-elect be inaugurated? We were made to understand that the election, uh, the, the inauguration will be on Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, and we are hoping that that uh, will still be the case. But there, there was an indication that they would want probably to move it uh, as soon as tomorrow. But now, for now, we still have the date set as the 28th, which is Tuesday. All right, Solo Fellow, we have to end it there. Thank you so much. That was our reporter, Solo Fellow Matibedi currently in Khabarone, the capital of Botswana. To Egypt now, where President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi says his country will take radical measures to tighten security on its border with the Palestinian Gaza Strip. Al-Sisi said this yesterday, a day after a suicide attack on an army post killed more than 30 soldiers. Friday's attack is the worst anti-state violence since al-Sisi ousted President Mohamed Morsi of the Muslim Brotherhood last year. Funerals are being held for the more than 30 Egyptian security personnel who were killed in two attacks in Sinai the previous day. The attacks also wounded more than 25 people. It was the worst anti-state violence to hit Egypt since its Islamist president was overthrown last year. The government of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has been squaring off against militants who have killed hundreds of soldiers and police ever since. I was waiting for my son. He only had six months to go and he comes in this condition? This is not fair. I swear, this is not fair. Do something. We voted for Sissy to do something. Do something already. Do anything with them. There was no immediate claim of responsibility for the attacks. The violence has prompted Egypt to declare a three-month-long state of emergency in parts of Sinai. Al-Sisi went on national television to extend his condolences, but also to caution. Tabli. External support was given to those who undertook this operation against the Egyptian army, as we've seen. Why? Pay attention. I'm talking to all Egyptians. This was done to break the will of Egypt and the Egyptians. This was done to break the will of the army.